shall we get real for a bit? This world is very dangerous as a place. There are all kinds of items and materials that either are directly dangerous or can be forged into something dangerous. Many people who invent these dangerous things are sometimes haunted by what they've made, but for others, they're just necessary evils to keep the world safe. No matter how they balance the scales, we need to recognize that the dangerous things in our world are something that everyone should know about in the hopes that more items like these are never brought to life. So with that, join us as we have a look at 20 most dangerous things in the world. Number 20. Trinity now, I'm not talking about the Holy Trinity because that would be pretty disrespectful to place on the list. Rather, I'm going to dive into the history of the United States to talk about a dangerous test that would forever change the world. So much so that you could argue that this is the most dangerous object ever created. In World War a dangerous race was taking place. It was one to end the war in the Pacific by any means necessary. But even in that race, there was another challenge that needed to be done quickly. A dangerous new power was being sought by some of the more dangerous nations of the world, including the Germans. As a result, the United States brought the most brilliant minds they could get to the country and then put them on the Manhattan Project. Their goal was to create the first atomic bomb. And they did just that, but before it could be unleashed upon Japan, they had to do some testing. One test was codenamed Trinity. Testing would be conducted in a desert about 35 miles southeast of Sirocco, New Mexico, on what was then a USAAF range and gunnery range, now part of the White Sands Missile Range. The testing took place on July the 16th of 1945, just a few months before two would be dropped on Japan. The testing was a success, and it would even be noted that some of the scientists strutted after they witnessed the detonation. They had made a device that would forever change the world. The atomic bomb would end the Second World War, and more powerful bombs would be made by the United States, Russia, and more over the years. That's why the world is almost always under the threat of nuclear annihilation. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Snap 10A. Now I'm going to take a side path from nuclear focus instead on a nuclear satellite. No, not as in a satellite that would be used to drop a nuclear payload, though I'm sure someone's thought of that over the years. Rather, I'm talking about a nuclear-powered satellite that was launched into space in 1965. Now, it may seem odd that someone would try to see if a satellite could be powered by a nuclear reactor, but if you think about it, it's not as crazy as it may seem. Nuclear power is something that everyone's used to power entire areas, so now imagine one that could run a satellite. It would, through theoretically be a lot more efficient, could power the satellite for a whole lot longer than a standard engine, and they wouldn't have to try to conserve power due to how the reactor would work. It may have been a bit ahead of its time, but the concept was feasible. The one that was launched into space in 1965 was the SNAP-10A. The SNAP-10A featured three major components, a compact fission reactor that generates heat, an energy converter that transforms some of that heat into electricity, and a radiator that radiates away heat that can't be used. So the question you may have is, if it was such a great concept, why aren't we using this all the time? Well, the SNAP-10A did launch into space and did last for a while, but it also had an electrical issue and thus was only operational for 43 days. And to be clear, it was a non-nuclear issue. A component had failed and the entire thing failed as a result. The satellite is still up there in space right now with its nuclear reactor, but other follow-ups were made and launched into space and it just never made it into shuttles. Number 18. Nerve Agents from an interesting idea that hasn't been fully worked out, we now head to one of the worst ideas in history of mankind that sadly worked out all too well. I'm talking about the creation of nerve agents. You might know them from their gaseous form that's been the source of many plots in television shows and movies, but trust me when I say that anyone who has these weapons only has one goal in mind, that being death and destruction. Very loosely, the chemicals that make up a nerve agent are so powerful that they can get into your body and destroy the system 
systems which allow you to function. Now remember, your body moving at any given moment is because of signals that are sent from your brain to the rest of the body. But what happens if those signals don't go anywhere or just straight up stop? Poisoning by a nerve agent leads to constriction of pupils, profuse salivation, convulsions, and involuntary urination and defecation, with the first symptoms appearing in seconds after exposure. Just think about that. You're already on the ground, breaking down at a cellular level within seconds of getting it inside of you. You typically die from cardiac arrest or not being able to breathe. Another reason this thing is so dangerous is that it can be turned into many forms to ensure that it does infect you. It can be inhaled, absorbed through the skin, and that's really the worst. And because of the risks that nerve agents propose, the world as a whole has agreed to ban the use of them in warfare. Only one war is broken out that went against that rule, and that was because of a dictator. So when much of the world agrees that something's bad, well then you know it's probably definitely bad. Number 17. Maxim Gun We'll stick with warfare for a bit, but talk about a dangerous tool that's influenced many of the weapons that we use in conflicts all over the world. The history of warfare is honestly connected to two words, evolution and escalation. At first, weapons like the sword and the bow were the best ones because they could easily be made, easily be used, and they got the job done so long as you were at the right distance. But with the evolution of gunpowder, now it was about who could make the biggest and best gun to wield in battle. That was not always easy, as guns in the early early days of combat were notorious for misfires, long loading times, and even more. But by the time that we got to 1884, one man named Hiram Stevens Maxim was so clever that he was able to create a weapon that would change everything, the first automatic machine gun. The Maxim gun featured one of the earliest recoil-operated firing systems in history. Energy from recoil acting on the breech block is used to eject each spent cartridge and insert the next one. Maxim's earliest designs used a 360-degree rotating cam to reverse the movement of the block, but this was later simplified to a toggle lock. Why was that feature so important? Well, while machine guns had been born before then, like with the first Gatling gun, they all had to be reloaded by hand, and sometimes they were a pain to wield. The Maxim gun took away from some of that hassle and struggle, and the result was a weapon that could fire a lot of bullets repeatedly with only occasionally reloading versus repeated loading. The gun would serve as the base plate for all machine guns that would come, including the ones that we have in our world today. Number 16. Iridium 33 and Cosmos 2251 Debris if you were ever to look up into space during a clear night sky, you would swear that there was nothing wrong going on up there. You'd see stars and the moon shining in the sky and think that you could just jump right into them if you had the ability. But here's the problem with that notion. Throughout the history of space travel, as small as it is in the grand scale of things, humanity has left a whole lot of things up in that sky and atmosphere. You may know it as space junk. The junk comes from all sorts of things, shuttles that we send into the air, satellites that we have in orbit. It comes from people on the International Space Station, and it also happens when the current stuff in space crashes into each other. Such as in 2009, when two communication satellites, known as the Iridium-33 and the Cosmos-2251, collided with each other. It was the first time that a hypervelocity collision had occurred, and that was a big deal and a bad thing. Why though? Well, because when two things like satellites collide, what do you think happens? That's right, debris is formed, big and small pieces of space junk would be scattered all over the atmosphere, and it was even said that there were at least 1,000 pieces of debris of varying sizes scattered all over the place. That was a problem because many had wondered if it would hit the International Space Station, or if the debris was large enough that at the right angle it would descend to the ground and not burn up in the atmosphere during that descent. Thankfully, no major fallout occurred from such debris, but the danger was very real and there were some very close calls. Number 15. International Space Station now, I know this one may not sound like it would be one of the most dangerous objects out there, but I'll explain why that's the case in some ways. You see, the International Space Station is one of the most important things that humanity has ever created, and I mean that very seriously. It's the largest human-made object in orbit currently by a wide margin, and the fact that it even got up there, and that it was an international collaboration, makes it astounding. 
After all, the people of the world don't often like to work with one another for various reasons. But even more important than that, we use the International Space Station to run all sorts of testing that we can't do on Earth. The astronauts on the station have to deal with a lot of microgravity. They aren't at zero gravity, but it's pretty close. The reason that's important is that we can test objects and do experiments in these weightless environments so that we can see how they could potentially react on places like the Moon and Mars. After all, we're trying to colonize both of those places, remember? Regardless, the reason that it's a dangerous object is that both inside and out, there are dangers. For example, the effects of microgravity on the astronauts can't be ignored. The human body is meant to have gravity placed upon it, so the astronauts have to exercise constantly in order to ensure that their bodies are not deprived of strength by the time they get back to Earth again. As for the physical dangers that it causes, well, could you just imagine if something went wrong and it plummeted to the Earth? If it hit at the right angle, it would hit the right spot, the damage could be catastrophic. Now yes, they're already planning what to do when they need to bring it down themselves, but let's just hope that goes smoothly for everyone's sake. Number 14. The Hubble Space Telescope Another object that you might not view as being dangerous, but not unlike the International Space Station, it does have some dangers looped into its construction. The Hubble Space Telescope was one of the defining moments for NASA when they launched it into orbit in 1990. This telescope would allow them to explore the vast reaches of space through its lenses, and thus not have to send probes or other objects and hope that they actually make it. It remains one of the largest and most versatile telescopes that we've ever launched into space. It's true that another one had launched recently to take its place, but the Hubble is still functional. It's recorded some of the most detailed visible light images, which allows a deep view into space, and many Hubble observations have led to breakthroughs in astrophysics, such as determining the rate of expansion of the universe. And so, imagine where we'd be without it in orbit. We wouldn't have made some of our groundbreaking discoveries, and that's not cool at all. Plus, it also helps to teach children about the universe and might get them interested in astronomy. But where is the danger, you may ask? Well, much like the space station, there's always the risk that something goes wrong with the Hubble and it decides to come crashing down on us. I know that that's doomsday talk and all, but it matters and it could happen if the right circumstances were to occur. Thankfully, it doesn't appear that it's going to happen anytime soon. And also, have you ever wondered what would happen if the Hubble discovered something that it was not meant to see? Number 13. Invisat now here's another thing that we launched into space, but there are a few twists to it. The Invisat was a satellite that we launched in 2002. It was going so fast when we launched it into space that it could circle the Earth in just 101 minutes. It was launched as an Earth observation satellite, and its objective was to service the continuity of European remote sensing satellite missions, providing additional observational parameters to improve environmental studies. Numerous scientific disciplines currently use the data acquired from the different sensors on the satellite to study such things as atmospheric chemistry, ozone depletion, biological oceanography, ocean temperatures and color, wind waves, hydrology, agriculture, arboriculture, and a whole myriad of other things that are very scientific. Well, you may not think of a single satellite looking at Earth could do so much, but it does. The only problem with it is that after about a decade of doing its job, it went inactive. As such, its mission was stopped and other satellites in space took its place. So, what is it doing up there right now? Well, it's space debris, and as I already told you, that's not a good thing if it crashes into any other object at some point. Number 12. Space Junk I've already talked about it before, but there are some serious dangers that loom above us right now, and we don't even know about them. Some speculate that there are actually millions of pieces of space junk just lurking above us, waiting to fall down. To be clear, the reason that we're not in any immediate danger is that many of those pieces are very small, so much so that if they were to fall to the world, the atmosphere would burn them up, which is why the atmosphere is so necessary. Well, at least one of the reasons that it's so necessary, but the catch is that there are are plenty of pieces that are much bigger and would have a harder time burning up in the atmosphere. For example, there are at least 14,000 pieces of space junk that are above 4 inches in length. That may not sound like a whole lot, but it is. And remember how I said above 4 inches in length? The bigger an object is, the harder it's going to be to burn up in the atmosphere. Especially if that material is comprised of heat-resistant stuff, which many of those parts can be due to the things they were originally attached to. Here's another dangerous element to the equation 
equation, because of how much space junk is out there, NASA and other companies have to constantly monitor the field so that when they send stuff up, they're not crashing into anything and endangering the mission. That's a lot to monitor just to have a safe launch. So while you may not notice the space junk out there, it is out there, and let's just hope that you don't have to meet it. Number 11. Swift-Tuttle Comet Let's talk about space junk that's outside of the atmosphere. If you were to be asked about the biggest threats to space from Earth, the two things that you would say were big rocks from space crashing into us like comets, and of course, aliens. One such comet that humanity has found out there is the Swift-Tuttle Comet. The comet only appears around Earth about every 133 years, and the last time that it was spotted near us was 1992, and before that was 1862. The reason for this is that it's a Halley's Comet type that has an orbit that you can rely on. It goes in one big loop in space, and that makes it predictable, which also means that it can be observed, which is why we know that the diameter of the comet is 16 miles across. That's why some people felt that it was in danger of hitting the Earth at one point, and they even did some research that said it was in no danger, and the orbit it took was slightly off each time. They felt that on its next rotation, there's a possibility that it could hit the planet. However, future research has debunked that information, and we're not in any immediate danger for now. Number 10. Didymos A the next two entries are part of a two-parter, so be ready for that. Humanity knows that the dangers of being hit by an asteroid could be catastrophic, and as a result, people have been working hard to not only identify the threats, but to see what we can do about them. Didymos A is the larger of binary asteroid systems. In this case, that means that the larger asteroid, the one that I'm talking about now, has a smaller asteroid orbiting it. That's because Didymos A was half a mile in diameter, and that's pretty big and would cause a problem if it hit the Earth. Thankfully, though, it would be determined to not be a major threat to the planet, despite the fact that it could come close to our orbit. But that doesn't mean that we didn't do anything to cause it. Number 9. Didymos B the smaller of the two rocks, Didymos B was only about 525 feet in length and thus the lesser of two evils. But because the closeness of the two asteroids, NASA decided to use them as a test to figure out if humanity could alter the direction of them by impacting them with rockets and payloads. The mission was known as DART and it had an impact on Didymos A in September of 2022. The mission was deemed a success because of how it was able to alter the trajectory of the asteroids further than they were before. That's a big win because it means if we need to try and divert another piece of rock, we might be able to do so. Obviously, every space rock is different, but you just never know when we might have to bust out a dart and launch it into space. Number 8. 1999 JM8 Asteroid now we're continuing on with asteroids that we know are out there, but while the last two were not threats, especially after the DART, the 1999 JM8 is a different story. That asteroid is not only a near-Earth object, but it's one that could hit us in the near future. It's on an orbit that's led to coming close to Earth multiple times in the past. It was not a doomsday scenario, but that could possibly change. What's more, the asteroid is four miles in diameter, which makes it more than enough of a threat to take seriously. If that thing were to enter the atmosphere at the right angle, well, let's just say that the Earth would be cooked and leave it at that. It's one of the largest of its kind, and as a result, it's being monitored very closely. Number 7. 1950 DA Asteroid when it comes to asteroids, one of the things that scientists do their best to predict is not only what the asteroid's size is and what it's made out of, but the likelihood of it crashing into the Earth. The 1950 DA asteroid may have only been 0.6 miles in diameter, a lot smaller than the last one I talked about, but there is one heck of a catch. That catch is that at one point in time, the asteroid was the rock most likely to hit the Earth. Granted, it would not be for another 800 years, but still, that would be a problem, plus the danger level level has apparently been updated. And so, whether they're massive or a fraction of the size of others, we hope that you see why every asteroid that's close to Earth has to be monitored. Number 6. 1999 RQ-36 Asteroid 
If the last one has the highest chance of hitting Earth in the future, what's the second highest one? Well, that would be the 1999 RQ-36 asteroid. It's about a third of a mile in diameter, but that still makes it quite the threat if it hits. Plus, it does not help that it has a shape that reminds people of a top, which might make it harder to break up in the atmosphere. In terms of the likelihood of it hitting us, that would be in about 1 in 1800. That may sound like decent odds, but when you're dealing with thousands instead of millions, that's something that you have to pay attention to or else. The good news is that the asteroid was so close that we sent one of our craft to space to get samples from it, and it'll return with those samples in the year 2023. Number 5. 2004 MN4 Asteroid the 2004 MN4 asteroid is another one that many people think we should pay attention to for one reason or another. On one of the scales that measures the likelihood of impact, the one that I'm talking about is the third most likely one to hit us. And if I'm being blunt, one of these asteroids is going to hit us, and our luck is going to run out one day, it's an inevitability, even though it may not happen for hundreds or even millions of years. But the question is, which one is it going to be? Where is it going to hit? And will we be able Able to minimize the damage. But there's something to send chills down your spine. On May 13th of 2029, we'll apparently be able to see these asteroids as they'll be just above 18,000 miles above the Earth. And that date? Well, that's Friday the 13th. If the Earth is going to get blown up, it's going to be on Friday the 13th, and Jason Voorhees will likely still be alive anyways. Number 4. 2000 SG344 Asteroid when it comes to asteroids, the more that we view them, the more we're going to learn about how dangerous they are for the planet. For example, the 2000 SG344 asteroid was another one that at one point in time was viewed as a major threat to our Earth. It was another that had the highest likelihood of hitting the planet as well. Thankfully, that has then been pared down, and now it's only the fourth highest likelihood of getting to hit the planet. The good news is that even if it does, it's only 125 feet in diameter, and and so, if it were to make a solid landing, the impact would be felt, but the crater it would leave would only be about 100 feet long. The phrase, small potatoes, comes to mind here. Number 3. The Lost Asteroid Here's another one that many consider a nightmare scenario. In 2007, an asteroid that was over 1,100 feet in diameter was found in the depths of space near Earth, but then it simply vanished. We literally had one day to observe it, and then it was gone. That's not really something you want to hear about a rock that could hit the planet, and ever since then, the lost asteroid has been searched for, and many wonder if it's the one that will put us in the ground both figuratively and literally. The reason that so many perceive it as being a danger is that we don't know a whole lot about it, and there's danger in not knowing something. Until it's discovered again, there are going to be plenty of people who think that it's going to kill us all. Number 2. Eros 43 Here's another wild card asteroid for you to ponder about. This is an asteroid that is not near Earth, but near Mars. So close is it to Mars that it goes into its orbit multiple times, and what's more, the rock is 14 miles long. That's more than enough to cause some damage to a planet, whether it be Mars or Earth. That brings me to another problem with Eros 43, is that it's not stable. And by that, I mean the orbit that it's in within the solar system isn't stable at all. In fact, it's so unstable that it could potentially careen to Earth should the right factors come into play. Whether or not that happens soon or not is debatable, but if the thing does hit us, we would all be in trouble. Number 1. Other Asteroids Wrapping up things, the other asteroids that are out there are equally as dangerous as the ones that I've specifically named. The biggest risk is that we can't possibly observe all of them at once. Now, I've shown you a lost asteroid already, but some of them haven't even been found yet in the first place. There are so many rocks out in space that even with things like the Hubble telescope and satellites, we still have not found them. And if we can't study them, then we can't know if one of them's going to kill us all and murder the planet. That's not to say that we should be in doomsday mode anytime soon, but it is something that you might want to keep in mind. That's all from the realm of dangerous items and the histories behind them. Were you shocked by the ones that made it onto this list? And which of these things do you feel is the most dangerous to our world today or its history? Is there another one that should be on here? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.